Have you ever noticed how many Apple products are just labeled as Pro these days? MacBook Pro, iPad Pro, AirPods Pro, iPhone 13 Pro. It seems like every product line has a Pro version. But what does this label actually mean and is it even justified? Are these really Pro? Apple's no stranger to calling things Pro. Final Cut Pro, which I'm going to edit this video on, is a professional video editing software. These are the AirPods Pro. They're marketed as Apple's Pro version of regular AirPods. but. Is Pro justified? They've got some improved qualities over the original AirPods. Better sound quality, active noise cancellation, even a better fit. But are they Pro? It might just be the audio nerd in me speaking, but like... Pro headphones are pretty expensive. Not that Apple's own lineup isn't actually that expensive. Normally they're over-ear headphones. Headphones. Not in-ears. And while you can get professional in-ears, they're more often for a stage setting, and they're definitely not through Bluetooth. So are they really designed for professionals? I mean, the easy answer is no. Uh, professional mixing engineers and like recording engineers and music producers will have their own headphones. And the main thing is, is they're marketed as a consumer product, not prosumer. So AirPod Cons might be a better name for them. Moving on to the MacBook Pro. So this one's a double-edged sword. Back in the day, you had the unibody designs with like 13 inch, 15 inch, and 17 inch. And that 17 inch was a bulky and definitely marketed towards pros. But these are Apple's high-end laptops with professional grade performance displays. And here I'm split. The 13 inch definitely seems to be a bit like AirPods Pro to me, where it is like simply, it's essentially the MacBook Air, but Pro. It's marketed as that, it's similar enough to the AirPods. Where it's different for me is with the 14 inch and the 16 inch. All these different ports they've added in and just the actual processing power and everything on them, I think you could use this in a professional context. You could edit video on this, you could do pretty serious music production on this. And while you could probably do some pro work with your AirPods, I don't think it's necessarily professional work, you know? iPad Pro is a bit middle of the road. We have this pro name and we've just essentially taken an iPad. And I love my iPad, I use it all the time, but it's just sticking an iPhone's camera on it and calling it pro and giving it a chip that the software realistically cannot take full advantage of. iPad essentially, Apple have this weird monopoly over the tablet market. It, not necessarily monopoly, but like most people, when they think of tablet, they think of iPad, as opposed to when you think of computer, you would most generally think of PC, as opposed to Macintosh. So the iPad's meant to be this general purpose tool that's used for playing games, browsing internet, controlling your fancy Philips Hue lights, etc. Is it worth Pro? I mean, sure, it's used by like professional graphic designers, but again, it is still just a consumer device iPhone 13 Pro, iPhone 13 Pro Max. And sure, the camera seems to be pretty good for video. Anyway, for stills, it still does all the weird post-processing that I'm not a big fan of, I'd rather do that myself. But for most people, I get it, I get it. Like, yeah, it has the Pro Motion display and can record, I think, uh, I think the Pro Max can record the ProRes video format. <laughs> and again, there we're getting into ProRes, where like it actually is a video codec used professionally but it has that term Pro in it, like Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, AirPods Pro. It's a weird juxtaposition of the term that just bothers me. And it's not just Apple. Uh, I just think they're the prime example of this. With the PlayStation 4, you had the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Slim, and PlayStation 4 Pro. Hmm. And Apple uses it with the term Max as well, but Max just typically means a bigger version. So iPhone 13 Pro, iPhone 13 Pro Max. AirPods. AirPods Max. Why am I dubbing the term Pro Apple's problem? So one issue is that like to consumers it can be misleading. I don't think that's typically like a massive issue, but it's just kind of, it says Pro so it must be good kind of thing, do you know? And another issue is the divide it can create. So you might take out your phone and it's like, oh, is that the iPhone 13 Pro? And you're like, oh no, it's just the iPhone 13. And it's not necessarily that big of a problem, but it does create a sort of divide over, I think, like a phone is a phone. Apple's been known for its design and innovation. The company's also been criticized in the past for putting style over substance. And using the Pro label on products that aren't designed for professionals could just be another example of this. So I remember when the iMac Pro was announced and people were rejoicing because it was like Apple's return to actual professional level equipment. Just in terms of Apple's new equipment, we have the Mac Studio, which for all intents and purposes is a Mac Mini Pro. But they chose not to give it that name, but it just creates confusion. It creates an unnecessary divide between consumers and it dilutes actual professional equipment. And I'm not saying that to 
put anything down. I'm just saying if you are creating professional video editing machines and you have a professional video editing bit of software that uses a professional video codec, all of which with Pro in the name, I don't think AirPods Pro fit into this ecosystem. So I think what Apple needs here is a new suffix. They need a new word that kind of fills the role of Pro, but in how they use the term Max. So plus or S. S used to be the old example of the iPhone 4S as opposed to the iPhone 4, the slightly updated version of newer things. So maybe we need AirPods S. But I don't think that's going to happen with companies like Sony, with the PlayStation 4, and Samsung, and a whole bunch of just other companies out there. In fact, I've just noticed <laughs> the headphones I used in the example, my DT 7070s say Pro on them. But these are actually professional pieces of equipment. I don't know, it's just interesting. I think it's it's been a bugbear of mine now for Apple recently. Like, are we gonna see an iPod Pro? Like, I know Apple is like killing off the iPod or has just killed off the iPod, but an iPod Pro with like a really good DAC and like support, like in a built-in headphone amp, that kind of thing, that'd be cool. Probably not gonna get it. And what about the Mac Pro? The actual like big beefy desktop workstation that still hasn't gotten an Apple Silicon upgrade as far as I know. Uh, it's just Apple, your branding is messy and it needs fixing. Uh, I think a new suffix is needed so you can keep, like keep Pro for one of the other, do you know what I mean? Either keep your AirPods as Pro or keep your Pro or as video codec as Pro. But like, let's just stop pretending that everything's Pro and yeah. So what's the verdict? Is it bad for Apple to use Pro labels on products that aren't necessarily designed for professionals? It's hard to say. Apple isn't trying to sell you a pair of AirPods that can be used as professional in-ear monitors. They're trying to sell you that warm, cozy feeling you get when you open the box and be like, oh yeah, these are pros. I suppose ultimately it's up to the consumer to decide if the pro label is worth it to them. And this isn't me hating on Apple. I use an iMac to edit these videos. I have an iPad that I love. I don't have an iPhone because I like to sideload apps and that kind of thing. But I'm in no way a hater of Apple. I even don't mind the Magic Mouse. So what do you think? Do you care about the pro label when you choose a product? Let me know in the comments below. So this video was filmed as part of my project for 2023 to record a video a week and upload a video a week to YouTube. So if you liked it, give it a like and a subscribe. That lets me know you properly liked it. We'll see what 2023 brings. Cheers.